Have you ever felt like your life was a TV show? Well, with the recent addition of The Truman Show to Netflix, it's a perfect time to look back on a film that explores exactly that, and peel back the layers on one of Jim Carrey's most ambitious and best movies ever. I'm Wilf What Culture, and here are 20 things you didn't know about The Truman Show. 20. The original script was much darker. The entire concept of this film is pretty dark as it is. We have a human being trapped in a bubble away from the outside world while every aspect of his life is controlled. Add the fact that Truman is legally owned by a corporation and you already have a terrifying concept that could easily lend itself to a horror film. However, during its conception, writer Andrew Nichol had a much darker tone in mind. Originally titled The Malcolm Show, the script featured an alcoholic lead character who lives in a much darker, always raining version of New York City. Christoph would follow him around, talking and hiding in the shadows rather than in a studio setting. However, when it came on to signing Peter Weir, the director already had Carrie in mind for the lead role. He put to Nickel that the film should have a much lighter affair, with the Truman Show looking more like a show people would genuinely watch 24-7. After 16 rewrites, Weir and Nickel finally settled on a script that brought us the light comedy drama film we all love. 19. Even his surname is manufactured. The name Truman was originally derived from the Old English words for faithful and trustworthy, given to a member of the family who accurately represented those ideals. When taken a little more literally, the name simply boils down to True Man, a reference to the fact that he is the only part of this reality that is real. As for his surname, the showrunners didn't have to look too far from the large domed studio that contains Sea Haven for inspiration. While the town was a seaside location, the dome was actually situated atop Mount Lee, just above the Hollywood sign. This means that Truman Burbank actually lived in Burbank, California. 18. Truman Every Day During the film, we are shown a few examples of families that are watching The Truman Show. In order to accurately portray just how big the series was, the featured viewers were set up to represent the multitude of countries that tuned in. A cool little detail that went over nearly everyone's head can be found within the Japanese family's home. One of the picture frames on the wall bears the words Manichi Truman in Japanese handwriting. Now, there was no chance someone who doesn't know how to read Japanese would spot this, but it's a testament to the incredible attention to detail that the filmmakers put out. And as a bonus fact, Japan actually attempted a real-life version of The Truman Show in 1998. Susanu Denpa Shoen managed to be even more twisted than the original premise, locking a man in captivity with zero possessions, including clothing. Nasubi spent nearly a year in captivity, entering mail-in competitions to aid his survival. 17. The premise was based on Michael Jackson. There are countless theories on where writer Andrew Nichol and director Peter Weir pulled inspiration for The Truman Show. Many point to the similarities between the film and the 1989 episode of The Twilight Zone Special Service, in which John Selig discovers that the last five years of his life have been part of a TV series running 24-7. Parallels have also been drawn from Thomas More's book Utopia, which depicts a fictional island that is closed off from the rest of the world. While there's no doubting the influence those had on The Truman Show, the main inspiration was actually the king of pop himself, Michael Jackson. In an interview with the director, Weir was quoted as saying, You watch The Truman Show and, I mean, Jim Carrey did a fantastic job, but Michael Jackson is Truman. He is who I based him on and he is the nearest thing to Truman. It's hard to argue with his logic, as Jackson was thrown in front of cameras his entire life. From the early days of the Jackson 5 right up to the star's death, the singer had zero privacy, which no doubt played a part in his mental decline. 16. The Cycle Continues Having finally figured out that his life wasn't as it seemed, Truman's time on television came to an end when he managed to escape the dome. Though that was far from the plan when it came to the show. Had Truman not caught on, there was potential for the Truman Show to continue indefinitely. Kristoff and the other studio executives had plans in place for a two-channel broadcast, one dedicated to Truman and another dedicated to his child. The concepts didn't make it into the final cut, 
but a deleted scene shows a deeply disturbing conversation between Kristoff and the other actors. The meeting starts with Kristoff letting the cast know that Hannah slash Meryl will not be renewing her contract and is leaving the show. Despite his wife leaving, Kristoff is insistent that the first on-air conception will still take place with his new love interest, Vivian. He explains that this must run smoothly to allow the next generation to play out, with Truman and his offspring at the forefront. This causes Marlon to ask, so when Truman dies, we just go back to the single channel format, right? Kristoff doesn't seem to acknowledge the question, which says everything. 15. Where the streets have some names. When creating an entire fictional town from scratch, there's a lot of things that suddenly need some kind of identity. Luckily, when it came to naming the streets of Sea Haven, there was an easy solution. Due to Truman not being aware of anything outside of the dome, architects had the entire world to use as inspiration. While all the outdoor scenes were shot in the town of Seaside, Florida, the street names were all changed for the film and eagle-eyed viewers will have noticed something that links each street name together. During the scene where Truman's car radio is acting up, a private radio channel can be heard tracking his movements, saying, he's heading west on Stewart, okay, he's making a turn onto Lancaster Square. These are not so subtle references to actors Patrick Stewart and Burt Lancaster, but the theme doesn't stop there. Throughout the film, it becomes obvious that each street is named after a famous actor or actress, including Drew Barrymore and Orson Welles. 14. One for all, all for one. The phrase all for one and one for all may be associated with the Three Musketeers more than anything else, but the famous quote actually dates back as far as the 1500s. Shakespeare used the phrase and it serves as the unofficial motto of Switzerland. In the context of The Truman Show, the phrase takes on a slightly different meaning. All for one refers to the cast, crew, and viewers that all play a part in supporting Truman in the name of the show, whereas one for all simply means that this man is there purely for the entertainment of the whole world. It's a dark twist on the normally positive adage and couldn't be a more perfect summation of the film. 13. Product Placement Throughout the Truman Show, product placement is absolutely rife. The main culprit is obviously Truman's first wife, Meryl. As she is the closest actor to Truman, Meryl would often showcase products whenever she found something new at the grocery store. Advertisers would pay top dollar to get their products in her hands for some in-your-face product placements, but there was still plenty of subliminal advertising thrown in as well. Truman's best friend Marlon is only ever shown drinking Penn Pavel's beer, a fictional brand that can also be seen in TV and film, from that 70s show to The Walking Dead. The subliminal advertising clearly works, as when we see the punters at Truman's bar, Penn Pavel's is the only beer anyone is buying. 12. There are hidden cameras everywhere. Even though a lot of Truman's life was scripted and manipulated, the premise was still very much a reality TV show. At the time, reality TV was a booming, emerging market, so the film's timing was nothing short of prophetic. On the first viewing, many complained of odd angles or overly static shots, not normally seen in blockbuster movies. However, the reasoning is simple, hidden cameras. When filming a reality TV show, hidden cameras are vital to capture sincere moments. For a show on the scale of this, literally hundreds of cameras were needed to capture Truman's every move across the town. However, they had to be creative to ensure he didn't catch on. The more you watch the film, the more you notice these little black dots built into nearly everything. Road signs, decorative pillars, even trash cans are hooked up to cover as much of the town as possible. 11. Truman gives the ring to his father. On the subject of hidden cameras, you may have noticed Truman's ring. It's a unique design with a comically sized black diamond, or at least what looks like a black diamond. During a heartbreaking scene where Truman's father drowns, he gives the ring to his son before he goes. Due to the emotional significance, Truman wears the ring for the rest of his life even alongside his wedding ring. Tragically, this ring is yet another deception and actually contains a hidden camera. It allowed for a close-up look at the show's subject and also allowed for the producers to track Truman's movements, ensuring the cast and crew were always in the right spot. When the two finally reunited, Truman gives the ring back to his father. It's unclear if he was aware the ring was actually a camera or it was simply a symbolic gesture of the love he had to his dad he once thought dead. Whatever his reasoning, giving back the ring made it even harder for the cast and crew to find Truman when he went missing. 10. And in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. 
There are a few things a show needs to be truly successful. A great premise, a highly relatable, lovable lead character, and an unforgettable catchphrase. Luckily for the showrunners, The Truman Show had all three of those qualities in droves. When it came to the latter part, the catchphrase, Truman had the perfect saying that was not only memorable, but also deeply wholesome, representing the kind-natured man he is. And in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. It's simple, catchy, and made everyone's day when they heard it. Truman displays a genuine affection for the people who surround him, but the consideration he showed for his peers also takes on a different meaning. With the show being broadcast live all across the world, the producers wanted a way to address everyone. They understood that, while it was morning in Truman's world, it wouldn't be morning in many different time zones. This meant they needed to have him address a global audience that he didn't realize he had. Considering his entire life has been manipulated for ratings, it's hardly a stretch to imagine the showrunners planted the phrase during Truman's early years. 9. Classical music only, please. Carey isn't exactly shy when it comes to his love of death metal, particularly Cannibal Corpse. The band were handpicked to make an appearance in Ace Ventura, with Carey hopping on stage with them for that hilarious scene. However, when it came to The Truman Show, Carey's character had a very different view on what music he enjoyed. But granted, he didn't have a lot of options when it came to Sea Haven Radio. Given that the radio waves within the dome were mostly used for communication between producers and cast, there was only enough bandwidth for one radio channel to play music. So why did it have to to be classical. Truman had only grown up with one kind of music and simply wasn't aware of the popular music that came along. It's also worth remembering that whatever was on Truman's radio would also play out over TV sets across the globe. This meant there was a whole bunch of legal work clearing music for Truman to listen to, except with classical. As nearly all classical music is public domain, the network wouldn't be required to pay royalties, as well as avoiding any potential copyright suits. 8. Time for a new job? As dark and abusive as the show was, it's important to remember that cast and crew were all relying on the show to continue else they're out of a job. Considering everyone involved had been employed to keep the show running and rarely left the dome, this was all they had to support them financially. When you think about The Truman Show from their point of view, it's a dream job. Let's face it, there aren't many careers left that offer lifetime employment and free housing. However, as Truman started to wise up to the deception, it was a sobering reminder to everyone involved that their cushy role was at risk. Many of the cast and crew will have started thinking about the future in a way they may never have needed to for years. For actors in the Dome, it was something they would need to do in secret. Even though everything seemed to be prepped for a fallout, there was still a chance the show could go on. For the crew up in the moon, there was less need for subtlety, leading to a shot of the control room director flicking through the local classifieds. 7. The newspaper is the same age as Truman Here's another example of the brilliant attention to detail put into this film. In another blink and you'll miss it moment, we're shown a copy of the local newspaper, the Seaside Times. The main headline is referring to the current homeless problem within Sea Haven and shows an elderly man being escorted to a waiting bus. This in itself is a smart move by the show's producers, in order to discredit Truman's father's attempt to contact him while disguised as a homeless man. Yet, that's not the only interesting feature about the local rag. If you pause the film when the paper is shown, you can make out that this issue came out December 13th. It also shows the issue number in Roman numerals as well as in English. Volume XXIX, number 10,765. With the newspaper being issued daily, this allowed fans to work out when the paper had started. What they found would surprise them, but made a lot of sense. Translated into years, 10,765 days is roughly 29 and a half years, which is exactly the same age as Truman. 6. Are you sure that's a good idea? For the show's long-term plan to play out how the network wanted it to, an immense amount of work was done to try and ensure Truman would never find out the truth behind his life. They also needed to plan for the possibility that he may decide to leave Sea Haven at some point in the future. This was mainly done through Truman's fear of water, which showrunners had implanted at an early age. Various accidents, including the drowning of his father, were created to remind Truman of the dangers that are beyond the shores. Though he eventually overcame this fear, allowing him to escape, 
his first attempt was a little less successful. During his major breakdown, when he kidnaps Meryl, Truman brings the car to a stop when faced with the one bridge out of town. As Meryl kindly reminds him, he can't drive over water due to his fear. What you may not have noticed, though, is a little message for Truman, a sign on the bridge that states, you are now leaving Sea Haven Island. Are you sure that's a good idea? It's subtle, but enough to plant doubts into Truman's head. 5. The Travel Agent in another attempt to get away, Truman visits the local travel agent to try and book a trip out of Sea Haven. The room is full of unusual things that makes an already suspicious Truman even more certain that something isn't quite right. As he waits for the agent to arrive, he sits down next to a poster that depicts a plane being struck by lightning, with the caption, It could happen to you. The rest of the room is equally ominous, full of posters and brochures about various getaways that all involve water in some way, shape, or form. There's even a barely hidden camera on top of the brochure rack. Our attention then turns to Doris, the travel agent, who runs in looking rushed and flustered. As Truman had done his best to sneak around, the producers weren't able to anticipate his arrival, and Doris wasn't camera ready before he entered the building. As she sits down, Doris realizes she's still wearing her bib, used in makeup to avoid getting products on her clothing. She quickly removes it when she realizes, before doing everything she can to stop Truman booking a trip. 4. Moonlight there is a pretty big advantage when it comes to living in a dome. Being sheltered from all that mother nature can throw at you means your day will rarely be ruined by a terrible rainstorm. In terms of filming, that's even better. Everything about the environment can be tailored to get that perfect shot, from the bright, happy summer days to the emotional, stormy nights. However, technology can only get you so far. Early in the film, we see what looks like a malfunction with the weather system inside the dome, when Truman is directly rained on. As he moves, the rainfall attempts to follow him, in an attempt by the crew to make it seem like it's raining everywhere. Eventually, the problem is solved, and the system releases a full rainfall program. There's another issue with the simulated weather system that comes with the storm programs. As Truman looks out onto the ocean, the flashes are simulated using strobe lightning. With the moon being simulated inside of the dome, it means the lightning illuminates the moon in a way that isn't possible in real life. 3. Truman Takes Vitamin D Another big issue with living inside a dome is the lack of natural light getting in. The sun obviously plays a huge part in our day-to-day -day lives, controlling our temperatures and lighting conditions. It also acts as the main source of vitamin D for most people. While vitamin D deficiency on its own isn't life-threatening, it can lead to a number of health problems down the line. With children, it has the potential to cause rickets, while adults are susceptible to a decrease in bone density, leading to osteoporosis in later life. Naturally, the producers are keen to ensure true Truman stays in tip-top shape. If he gets sick or dies, the show comes to an end. Thankfully, there are plenty of products on the market to help supplement nearly every vitamin. This is exactly what we see Truman doing, as there is a bottle of vitamin D supplements on the breakfast table. Yet another example of product placement. 2. My Little Clown when Truman and Meryl meet up with his mother, they flick through an old photo album containing pictures of Truman growing up. After a couple of pages, his mother stops on a particular photograph. Oh, my little clown, she says. Obviously, an affectionate nickname she once had for him. This is also written above the entry, but it has an even deeper meaning than a simple cute name. The picture features a young Truman, dressed up as a clown in full makeup. It's a scene we've seen before, when he was rummaging through his trunk, filled with secret mementos from the time before his father died. The clown costume acts as a perfect metaphor for Truman. His entire life, from his highest accomplishments to his lowest moments, has been put on display for the entertainment of others. Much like a clown takes focus in a circus. The picture in particular serves as another metaphor that really cuts to the core of Truman's life. Not only is he dressed as a clown, he is also behind the bars of a childproof gate, foreshadowing that he is actually a prisoner. 1. The Truman Show Delusion is Real while The Truman Show may not have been the first time such a premise had been addressed, it certainly became the focal point for a specific form of paranoia. The Truman Show delusion refers to a condition wherein the afflicted feel as if their life is in the control of an outside source, or that their every move is being watched on camera. The term was coined 10 years after The Truman Show, when two brothers, Joel Gold and Ian Gold, a psychiatrist and neurophilosopher, started looking into unique cases of the disorder. Their research saw the two brothers reach out to hundreds of patients with varying levels of the disorder. One of the most severe cases was an upper-middle-class army veteran, 
who wished to climb the Statue of Liberty in order to escape the millions of people he thought were watching him on this show. He believed all his friends and families were actors in his scripted life. While the disorder isn't officially recognized, cases are widespread, and one study in the London Institute of Psychiatry referred to it as a cluster of symptoms common in early stages of schizophrenia. And there you have it, folks, 20 things you didn't know about The Truman Show. Feel free to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, and drop me a follow on Twitter at uslidedogu. I'm Will for What Culture, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.